hello students welcome to neat wizards so today we are going to discuss about the chapter number 2 from the 11th class biological classification the important points from this chapter i will repeat two times okay so let's get started aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification he used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees shrubs and herbs he also divided animals into two groups those which had red blood and those that did not in linnaeus time a two kingdom system of classification with plant and animalia please note that point the two kingdom classification system was given by linnaeus a two kingdom system of classification with plant and animalia kingdoms was developed that included all plants and animals respectively this system did not differentiate between the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes unicellular and multicellular organisms and photosynthetic green algae and non photosynthetic fungi organisms classification of organisms into plants and animals was easily done and was easy to understand but a large number of organism did not fall into either category hence the two kingdom classification used for a long time was found in adequate besides gross morphology a need was also factor for including other characteristics like cell structure nature of wall mode of nutrition habitat methods of reproduction evolutionary relationship etc classification systems for the living organism have hence undergone several changes over the time plant and animal kingdoms have been a constant under all different systems the understanding of what groups organism be included under these kingdoms have been changing the number and nature of other kingdoms have also been understood differently by different scientists over the time now it's very important topic so please listen carefully five kingdom classification system r h whitaker in the year 1969 proposed a five kingdom classification the kingdoms defined by him were named monera protista fungi plants and animalia the main criteria for classification used by him included cell structure body organization mode of nutrition reproduction and phylogenetic relationship the three domain system has also been proposed that divides the kingdom monera into two domains leaving the remaining eukaryotic kingdoms in the third domain and thereby a six kingdom classification let us look at this five kingdom classification to understand the issues and considerations that influenced the classification system earlier classification systems included bacteria blue green algae fungi mosses ferns gymnosperms and the angiosperms under plants the characters that unified this whole kingdom was that all the organisms included had a cell wall in their cells these placed together groups which widely differed in other characteristics it brought together the prokaryotic bacteria and the blue green algae with other groups which were eukaryotic it also grouped together the unicellular organisms and the multicellular ones say for example clemidomonas and spirogyra were placed together under algae 
the classification did not differentiate between heterotrophic group fungi and the autotrophic green plants too. They also showed a characteristic difference in their wall composition. The fungi had chitin in their walls while the green plants had a cellulosic cell wall. When such characteristics were considered, the fungi were placed in a separate kingdom. Kingdom fungi, all prokaryotic organisms were grouped together under kingdom Monera and the unicellular eukaryote organism were placed in Kingdom Protista. Kingdom Protista has brought together Chlamydomonas chlorella. The chlorella earlier placed in the algae within plants and both having cell walls. With Paramecium and Amoeba, the Paramecium and Amoeba were earlier placed in the animal kingdom which like cell wall it has put together organisms which in earlier classifications were placed in different kingdoms these happened because the criteria for classification change these kind of changes will take place in future to depending on the improvement in our understanding of characteristics and evolutionary relationship over time an attempt has been made to evolve a classification system which reflects not only the morphological physiological and reproductive similarities but is also phylogenetic is based on evolutionary relationships in this chapter we will study characteristics of kingdom monera protista and fungi of the vitiquer system of classification the kingdom Plantae and Animalia commonly refer to as plants and animal kingdoms. So let's get started. The Kingdom Monera. Bacteria are the sole members of the Kingdom Monera. They are the most abundant microorganisms. Bacteria occur almost everywhere. Hundreds of bacteria are present in handful of soil. They also live in extreme habitats such as hot springs, deserts, snow and deep oceans where very few other life forms can survive. Many of them live in or on the other organisms as parasites. Bacteria are grouped under four categories based on their shape, the spherical shape known as cocus, the root shape bacteria known as and the coma shaped bacteria known as vibrium and the spiral shaped bacteria is known as spirulum. The bacterial structure is very simple. They are very complex in behavior. Compared to many other organisms, bacteria as a group show the most extensive metabolic diversity. Some of the bacteria are autotrophic they synthesize their own food from inorganic substrates. They may be photosynthetic autotrophic or chemosynthetic autotrophic. The vast majority of bacteria are heterotrophs. They depend on other organisms or on dead organic matter food. Monera included archaebacteria and eubacteria. So, Archaebacteria. These bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats, such as extreme salty areas known as halophiles, hot spring living archaebacteria known as thermoacidophiles, and marshy areas living archaebacteria known as methanogens. Archaebacteria differ from other bacteria in having different cell wall structure and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. Methanogens are present in the gut of several ruminant animals such as cows and buffaloes and they are responsible for the production of methane biogas from the dung of these animals. You bacteria, there are Thousands of different eubacteria or true bacteria 
we are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall and if motile of flagellum cyanobacteria also referred to as blue green algae have chlorophyll a similar to green plants and are photosynthetic autotrophs the cyanobacteria are unicellular colonial or filamentous freshwater marine and terrestrial algae the colonies are generally surrounded by gelatinous sheet they often form blooms in polyketid water bodies some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized shells called heterocyst nostoc and anabina hemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their atp production they play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and sulfur now heterotrophic bacteria are most abundant in nature the majority are important decomposer many of them have a significant impact on human affairs they are helpful in making curd from milk production of antibiotic fixing nitrogen in legumes etc some are pathogens causing damage to human being crops farm animals and pets cholera typhoid tetanus syphilis cancer are well known diseases caused by different bacteria bacteria reproduce mainly by fission sometimes under unfavorable condition they produce spores we also produce by a short of sexual reproduction but adopting a primitive type of dna transfer from one bacterium to other the mycoplasma are organism that completely lack a cell wall please note that point because it's very important the mycoplasma are organism that completely lack a cell wall we are the smallest living cells known and can survive without oxygen many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants now kingdom protista all single celled eukaryotes are placed under protista but the boundaries of these kingdom are not well defined what may be a photosynthetic protista to one biologist may be a plant to another in these books we include chryophytes dinoflagellates eugenoids slime molds and protozoans under protista members of protista are primarily aquatic these kingdom forms are linked with the others dealing with plants animals and fungi in eukaryotes the protistan cell body contains a well defined nucleus and other membrane bound organelles some have flagella or cilia produced reproduce asexually and sexually by a process involving cell fusion and zygote formation chrysophytes these group includes diatoms and golden algae desmids We are found in fresh water as well as in marine environments. We are microscopic and float passively in water plants and plankton's. Most of them are photosynthetic. In diatoms, the cell walls form two thin overlapping cells, which fit together as in a soap box. The walls are embedded with a silica, and thus the walls are indestructible. Thus, diatoms have lived behind large amount of cell wall deposits in their habitat. This accumulation over billion years is referred to as a diatomaceous earth. Being gritty, this soil is used in polishing, filtration of oils and syrups. Diatoms are the chief producers in the oceans. Now, dinoflagellates. These organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic. They appear yellow, green, brown, blue, or red. depending on the main pigments present in their cells the cell wall has stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface most of them have two flagella one lies longitudinally and the other 
transversely in a furrow between the wall plates very often great dinoflagellates for example conulex undergo such rapid multiplication that they make the sea appear red tides toxins released by such large numbers may even kill other marine animals such as fishes now eugenoids majority of them are freshwater organisms from in stagnant water instead of a seal wall they have a protein rich layer called a pectin which makes their body flexible they have two flagella a short and a long they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight when deprived of sunlight they behave like heterotrophs by predating on the smaller organisms interestingly the pigments of eugenoids are identical to those present in higher plants for example chitina now slime molds slime molds are saprophytic protist the body moves along the cane twigs and leaves single thing organic material under suitable conditions they form an aggregation like plasmodium which may grow and spread over several feet during unfavorable conditions the plasmodium differentiates and forms pretty bodies bearing spores at their tips the spores possess two walls they are extremely resistant and survive for many years even in the adverse conditions the spores are dispersed by air currents now protozoans all protozoans are anthropods and live as predators or predators they are believed to be primitive relatives of animals there are four major groups of protozoans and boy protozoans these organisms live in fresh water she water or moist soil they move and capture their prey by putting out Pseudopodia is known as false feet. As an amoeba, marine forms have silica cells on their surface. Some of them, such as Antamoeba, are parasites. Flagellated protozoans. The members of this group are either free-living or parasitic. They have flagella. The parasitic forms cause diseases such as sleeping sickness. Example: Tetrasomon. Ciliated protozoans. These are aquatic, actively moving organisms because of the presence of 